The CDC is holding a high stakes meeting today to discuss a third coronavirus vaccine dose after the FDA officially authorized the booster shot for immunocompromised Americans. That includes people living with various diseases as well as organ transplant recipients. CDC officials are expected to vote on whether or not to recommend the move. Dr. Bob Lahida is the director of the Institute for Autoimmune and Rheumatic Diseases at St. Joseph Health. Uh, he joins us now to discuss this and more. So this is kind of right up your alley, autoimmune. This would be people yes. who have uh, a, a compromised immune system. Um, so kind of take us through uh, the process. What's expected to happen today with the CDC's Vaccine Advisory Committee? And when might the general population, uh, if ever, see a third dose, do you think? Well, America's going to fall in line, Anne-Marie, with countries like Germany, France, Hungary, and all of it started with Pfizer looking at Israeli shots. They saw that it was 93%, their two-shot regimen, 93% effective. But then they gave the booster shot, and they found that 64% was effective against the uh, breakthrough infection. So it made a lot of sense because the immune system really, uh, in patients who are on corticosteroids like prednisone, on drugs that are cancer drugs like cyclophosphamide and other kinds of medicines that we give to transplant patients, patients with diseases like lupus, uh, patients with other autoimmune and also immunosuppressive conditions. There's a lot of people out there that have immune deficits that don't even know it. Those are the people who will benefit from the booster shots. So this is really important because I'm asked about this all the time from patients. Uh, let me ask you about this, Dr. Bob. Uh, San Francisco is the latest U.S. city to announce vaccine mandates for indoor activities. But unlike New York City, it will not allow unvaccinated people to show a negative COVID test before going into a bar or restaurant or gym. Um, it's fully vaccinated or nothing. Do you think San Francisco's right. mandate might be just a bit too extreme? It might be, but, you know, the 78 <clears> percent <throat> of the people of San Francisco, believe it or not, are vaccinated. And uh, that is really an incredibly high number. So they're really being very careful. And I think with FDA full approval of the vaccines, that can be mandated. And that's going to be very interesting because I don't think other cities around the country are going to go for that, particularly a place like New York, which only uh, honors one dose and requires one dose, but doesn't require your testing to get into a restaurant or to a ball game or, or a concert. Um, so, Doctor, you're in New Jersey, where, according to the CDC, all 21 counties have high or substantial rates of virus transmission. The agency recommends everyone wear masks at indoor public settings, even if they're vaccinated. Are you concerned about another wave of COVID overwhelming the hospitals in your state? Yes, of course, Anne Marie, we are concerned. Uh, definitely, uh, the problem here is that everybody's dropped their masks. We, of course, wear masks in our clinics and in the hospital by requirement. But if you go to church or you go to the movies, people don't wear masks. If you go to the bagel place in the morning to get your breakfast, nobody's wearing masks and it's a big crowd. So now all of that's going to change. Of course, we're worried, particularly in southern New Jersey, where the numbers have really spiked. But it's going to creep up and hopefully it will not be very, very bad as it was last year in the spring here in New York City and New Jersey. Uh, yesterday, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis announced a rapid response unit would be administering monoclonal antibody treatments to people infected with COVID around the state. Florida, as you know, has seen a record number of infections and hospitalizations in recent weeks. So how might this treatment, Dr. Bob, help folks? And would you recommend taking it as the first signs of COVID symptoms, at the first sign of COVID sy symptoms, as Governor DeSantis suggested? Yeah, Vlad, this is really important. You may remember back when uh, President Trump got the uh, infection. Uh, he got the Regeneron monoclonal cocktail. Now, these monoclonal antibodies are very targeted antibodies against the virus and the spike protein, and they're only given in emergency. So when you go to the emergency room to prevent you from ad being admitted, we may administer the monoclonal antibodies. There are several of them. The Regeneron is a cocktail. These are very, very specific, and they can reduce hospitalization and, in many cases, reduce death. But you have to have access.
access. And that's where Ron DeSantis came in. He decided to put them on a, I guess it's on a, like a school bus where the, uh, the monoclonal antibody can be administered to patients with symptoms in the field. It's the hospital going, the hospital emergency room basically going out to your neighborhood to give you the monoclonal antibody. And it's a kind of an interesting move, and I'll be very, very interested, as I'm sure you will be, to see what the data show in a couple of weeks. Um, okay, this is interesting. I want to get your take on the um, on what these numbers mean. Uh, everyone was really concerned about Lollapalooza. We've got hundreds of thousands of people gathering in the same place for this massive concert. If you saw the aerial pictures, <laughs> uh, like me, you sort of started to hyperventilate, you know? Like, um, But that being said, at least right now, according to um, some officials out of Chicago, only about 200 people who attended the festival actually contracted COVID. You needed to either be vaccinated or provide a, co a negative um, COVID test. Um, I was just checking my calendar right now to see if we're at the two-week mark, because I don't think we are quite at the two-week mark. Almost. So maybe more cases could come up. I don't know. Um, or maybe we are. But so what's your take on the numbers? Do you think they're accurate, um, considering that people came from all over, descended on Chicago, and then left? I don't know how the contact tracing, how accurate the contact tracing was, but what's, what's right. your takeaway? <clears throat> My takeaway is that this is an amazing uh, experiment in 385,000 <laughs> young people. Now, the key here, the operative word is young people, because remember, they don't get as sick as old folks do. And uh, there were 203 cases, which is not a super spreader event. Now, these cases could have come from afar. They could have come and uh, they could have entered the uh, Lollapalooza. Uh, but, you know, we th presume or the numbers that the, the health department of Chicago are giving us are that 88 percent of these uh, young people were vaccinated. And there were 127 positives or 0.04 percent of those vaccinated that got ill. With the non-vaccinated, there were 0.16 percent. So it was it was a higher number of those who were non-vaccinated. But as you say, Anne-Marie, they could have come from anywhere. Uh, they could have come from other parts of Illinois, uh, other parts of the Midwest. Uh, it's interesting when, when they were asked uh, whether a vaccine was important, the young people said 76% said yes, 13% said they really didn't matter, and 11% said absolutely not. So that's a typical young person's uh, massive event. And it, it's, uh, in many ways, it's, it's a great thing to see that it wasn't a super spreader event, but it's also an interesting uh, capsule of how people think about the vaccine. Hmm. All right, Dr. Bob Lahita, as always, my friend, thank you very much. Have a wonderful weekend. Thanks, guys. You too. Gun violence is ripping across America. 2021.